Hey, friends! I have a new little feature for you here on the channel. Check this out. This time, we're taking a look at a movie pair. What's that? Well, it's sort of like the creature double feature. See, Channel 56 in Boston came up with this idea way back in the day. They'd put two monster movies like Godzilla or Frankenstein's back to back. And this is what they called the creature double feature. So a movie pair is something like that. Two movies that just sort of fit together. Not sequels or movies released at the same time. That's more like a movie duel. The best example of a movie pair that comes to mind is The Maltese Falcon and The Big Sleep. They both just kind of fit together. They have a similar vibe and you can watch them back to back. So to kick things off, I have two movies for you featuring Robo Chicks and Cyber Babes. <laughs> Both of these are obvious riffs or rip offs of 1987's Robocop. Although, interestingly, our first feature was in production before Robocop. First up, we have Programmed to Kill also known as The Retaliator. This started life in 1985, but wasn't released until 1987, probably to cash in by riding the coattails of Robocop. In this one, a terrorist chick and her terrorist pals, including her terrorist boyfriend, are going around terrorizing people. They shoot up a marketplace and also kidnap some kids belonging to Western diplomats. The Agency calls in the only man who can save the day, a freelance operative for hire named Eric Matthew. Matthews and his team go in to extract the kids and clean house. They get the kids out all right, but they also capture the Terra Chick, who almost kills our hero. In the process, she's almost a gunner herself. She's declared brain dead. The Agency then operates on her, shoving circuit boards up her backside and augmenting her skeletal structure and brain pan. Now they control the perfect killing machine, a robot chick. The plan is to send her in to wipe out her boyfriend and her fellow terrorists. But of course, something goes wrong. The robot chick short circuits and her memories return. And now she starts to use her new powers to kill off everyone involved in the project including Matthews. So this movie is what you get if it were made by Canon, if they didn't have any money. It's not great. Our hero is played by Robert Ginty. He was sort of a familiar face as a supporting actor. He was on Black Sheep Squadron and The Paper Chase, his two biggest claims to fame. That and he hung out with some famous classic rockers like Jimi Hendrix. He did a lot of one-off guest spots on other TV shows too. They were clearly trying to make his character out to be like Dirk Pitt from Sahara. But sad to say, uh, never buy it. The writing doesn't help him much either. The Robo Chick is played by Sandal Bergman. We last saw her in Xanadu. She was one of the muses. She also was in Conan the Barbarian and Red Sonja. She started her career as one of Dean Martin's gold diggers on Dean's TV show. <laughs> she's not bad here, but she's a robo chick, so she doesn't have much emoting to do. So this thing is a mixed bag, to be sure. The Robo Chick is way overpowered for one thing, and can even connect and hack into the agency's computers by mouthing the tones from an old dial-up modem. <laughs> Ginty is a limp rag as the tough guy hero. They cut a whole subplot about Ginty's estranged wife and kid and her new husband. They shot all that, but cut it, leaving a somewhat choppy edit, especially at the end. 
But one redeeming feature is when the robo chick takes on some soldiers at an air base. She's running through a maze of cargo containers as they chase her, as a searchlight swoops overhead and makes all kinds of cool shadows and stuff. That was pretty cool, but the ending well, really seems like it was tacked on from cutscenes. Anyway, our second feature has a bit more to it. This is Running Delilah, shot in 1992 but only released later in 1993. In this one, a chick, Delilah, is working for the agency and has infiltrated a gun running operation. When her cover is blown, she's given some 9mm clips. In the back! Oh, that's gonna leave a mark. But her contact and wannabe lover gets to her and rushes her off to the agency's lab. There, Doctor seriously needs a haircut, performs robo-surgery to save her life. They give her... implants. Like a video eye and a new spine and things. Anyway, she's now a cyber babe. And she isn't happy about it. Not only is she half machine, she has no sense of touch and can't feel anything. It's a hell of a waste if you ask me. Eventually, she adapts, and with her new abilities, she trains up to become a super agent just in time to work a case involving some stolen plutonium about to be handed over to a terrorist bad guy. This one has some name brands in the cast. Kim Cattrall is Delilah, she's really good, uh, trying to navigate the emotional issues of becoming a cyber babe. I liked how they spent some time on that and didn't just hand wave it away. We have a young Billy Zane as her contact and would-be lover. He's okay, maybe not as good as he would be in other films he starred in later on. But man, he looks really young here, doesn't he? <laughs> And then there's Diana Rigg as the director of the agency. She's great as the spy chief, you really buy it. If Judy Dench wasn't available to play M in the James Bond franchise, they totally should have gone for Diana Rigg because if this is anything to go by, she would have been great. Running Delilah started life as a pilot for a proposed TV series for ABC television. Which means the network executives liked the concept enough to shell out some dough for the pilot movie. The series never happened and the pilot was shelved. Later released on video. It, it's kind of a shame. It's no surprise ABC was interested, as ABC was the network that brought us the Six Million Dollar Man and the Bionic Woman back in the 1970s. In fact, that's essentially what Running Delilah is. The Bionic Woman, but with a darker tone and more up-to-date technology. Now, a movie pair is not a contest between the two, which is better. But of these two, I like Running Delilah more. Program to Kill has some good action stuff and has some of that Canon Pictures vibe, but Running Delilah is a bit more polished and has more name brand star power going for it. Plus, they went to the trouble of shooting some of it on location in Paris. I watched Program to Kill first and then Running Delilah, and I think that's a good order to see them in. Both pictures are available from Kino Lorber, and Program to Kill has an interview with screenwriter Robert Short discussing the movie and some of the problems with it. If you want to see more movie pairs videos like this one, just, just let me know down, down in the comments down there. But you take care of yourselves, and I'll see you in the next one.